Hi, I'm David Gregg. I'm the Commodore of the Bennett Yacht Club. This is a series of videos intended to show that anybody can build a Bennett boat. There are as many ways to build Bennett boats as there are builders. This is just a way that works for me. Everybody who starts out to build a boat has a picture in their mind of the finished product sailing across the harbor. Every step I'm going to show you in the design phase is intended to elicit that vision from the person we're building the boat with. To design a boat, we ask a series of questions. Each question focuses on an important area of the boat. The shape of the bow, the shape of the stern, the length, the shear, the shape of the keel. So we start off by asking about the length. You can have a kid hold their hands up. How big is this boat? This big. And then you measure, or, or this big, and you measure. And that's how you get the length. We'll worry about the rig later, but we're going to look at the bow, the keel, rudder and transom, and maybe the shear line. What kind of bow does their boat have? Maybe it's a traditional bow like this, a spoon bow, or maybe it's a clipper bow like this, or maybe it's got a plum stem like this, or maybe it's even exotic and it has a, a bow that goes forward. Sterns could have a traditional look like this, or they could have a racy modern look with a reverse transom like that. Or maybe they're, maybe they're more rounded, like this. One of the things you have to figure out when you're designing a boat is what does the hull look like in cross-section? Here's a boat that has a flat bottom. Here's a boat that's got a triangular shape. And this boat is rounded. The shear is an important part of the look of a boat. Traditional boats have a, a nice pretty curve like this that goes from the bow to the stern. Uh, it might also have a racy shear, a reverse shear like this. And don't forget that a shear might have a couple of different parts. It might have a curve like this at the bow and like this at the stern. First, the keel has to be uh, wide enough to resist the sideways push of the wind and to make the boat go forward. It has to be deep enough to hold a lead ballast to keep the boat upright. And it has to have a sloped front to stop seaweed from getting hung up. So, if this is your boat, you can ask your junior designer whether you want a deep keel like this. Or you can ask whether you want a long, shallow keel like this. This is a more racy look, and this is a more traditional look. Whichever keel you decide on, it needs to be sloped in the front so seaweed will flow off it. You can't have a keel that goes straight down like this, or that has a ballast at the bottom that goes forward of the keel. It'll catch seaweed and slow the boat down. One of the things you have to figure out when you're designing a boat is where the rudder goes. There are a bunch of possibilities. One is a stern hung rudder, either with or without a skeg. Another is a spade rudder. And another is a keel hung rudder. If you have a stern hung rudder, the skeg is important for strengthening it. A spade rudder gives you a lot of rudder authority, but it's vulnerable to bending and breaking. I like a keel hung rudder because it's the sturdiest and it has a traditional look. So it's time to put them all together in, and see the vision. This boat's going to have a clipper bow, a traditional shear, but a contemporary reverse transom. It's probably got a little bit of rocker in the bottom. And for a keel, let's compromise between a deep keel, deep modern keel, and a long traditional keel. There it is. That's the vision for our new boat. So now we're going to change our vision of the boat into a scale drawing, a scale profile drawing. 
First, we need a straight line across this piece of heavy paper. This is our baseline. Now, how long is this boat? It's going to be 20 inches. So we'll make marks at the 20 inch spot and the zero spot. Okay. Now remember, this boat has a traditional shear except for a reverse transom. So we can just go ahead and draw that right on here like this. Like that. And we want a clipper bow. And a hull with some rocker in it. Okay. And then we want a moderate keel. A little bit aft. The keel needs to be aft of the center of the boat. So let's do let's do a keel about like this. I'm going to draw the rudder in here just for our estimating purposes. And when you have the lines you want, all you have to do is cut them out with scissors. So I have a piece of scrap pine here. This is just regular pine. And I've planed it down to half an inch thick to help make the boat light. <clears throat> and we just trace our pro boat profile on a clear piece of this pine. And cut it out on the bandsaw. So always trying to keep the weight down, we're going to drill a series of holes in this profile. Now this is going to be the keel below here, so we don't drill any holes here, but we're going to drill holes all through here with this 7 8 inch spade bit. With our paper cut out, We've defined the shape of the boat as viewed from the side. And here's the wooden spine that we made. But that's only part of how we define the shape of a boat. The shape of the overall hull is also defined by the view from above. We need to, we need to create another cutout that's the shape of the deck. So let's start by drawing another baseline on our big sheet of paper and measuring 20 inches. I actually like a little bit of a V, so I'm going to make it like this. Now how wide is our boat overall? All you have to do is measure out half of what you want your total width to be and mark it like this. So if we want a 6 inch wide boat, we mark it there. An 8 inch wide boat, that would be, 8 inches would be very wide for a 20 inch long boat. And I'm putting it about in the middle, maybe a little aft. And now all we have to do is connect up our wide bow with our mark of the extreme beam here. We make sure the line we want is nice and dark. And then we cut it out with scissors. So we've cut out our deck shape and now you can see that this plus the profile defines the shape of our new boat. Of course we've only got half the deck because when we're ready we're going to trace it on one side of the boat and we're going to flip it and trace it on the other and that way we're going to ensure symmetry.